Hello, and welcome to the Bamboo Lab Podcast with your host, Peak Performance Coach, Brian Bosley. Are you stuck on the hamster wheel of life, spinning and spinning, but not really moving forward? Are you ready to jump off and soar? Are you finally ready to sculpt your life? If so, you've landed in the right place. This podcast is created and broadcast just for you. All of you strivers, thrivers, and survivors out there. If you'd like to learn more about Brian and the Bamboo Lab, feel free to reach out to explore your true peak level at www.bamboolab3.com. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Bamboo Lab podcast. As always, I'm your host, Brian Bosley. This recording is January 8th, 2023, and we have an amazing guest that I've been very excited to bring on here for the past couple of months. I want to read a heart letter real quickly that came in, I think, via voice or uh, Facebook last week. And this gentleman just said, Brian, I'm going to continue to do my best to bring more people to the Bamboo Lab podcast. I've been listening to the podcast. Very stimulating and thought provoking. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I can't even tell you how much I appreciate little gestures like that. We keep getting this in daily, daily, daily. So please, if you like what you hear today, send us a message. If you don't like what you hear what we say today, send us a message. But during the course of today's podcast, please smash that like button, subscribe, rate, review us, and please share it with three people you love. All right. The analytics as of today are we are now being broadcast and subscribed to on all six continents. We are in 43 cities as of this morning. Hungary joined us over the uh, course of last night. We are in now 1,103 cities around this globe of ours. So thank you all so much for your support and your listening. All right, today's episode is dedicated to Damar Hamlin. As I'm sure most of us know by now, number three safety from the Buffalo Bills collapsed of a cardiac arrest last Monday, January 1st, while playing a game of football. He is recovering, and it's just been so refreshing to see the not just the NFL world and the sports world, but the entire country and so much of the free world gathering around for support and prayer of him. He's coming along. He's healing. Prayers and hopes and wishes and positive vibes sent to you, Damar. All right. Today's guest has a very simple bio, at least from my perspective, but he is a treasure to me. Probably, well, definitely one of the top two biggest gifts ever given to me in my life, my son, Dawson Bosley. Welcome, Dawson, to the Bamboo Lab podcast. Thanks for having me. All right, you're going to notice Dawson has had a cold now for the past few days. He'll be coughing, sneezing, sniffling. And he's doing some medication, but uh, despite all that, he's still going skiing this afternoon. So, all right, here we go. Well, so today's going to be a different. Normally, when I'm talking to a guest, as all of you know, I normally ask the guest to speak to the bamboo, uh, to speak to me as, we're, as if we're talking on the phone, just two friends talking over a cup of coffee or a beer. But today, because I know most of this stuff about Dawson, I don't know everything, but I do know a lot. I'm going to ask him to talk directly to the bamboo pack and the listeners out there. So, without further ado, Dawson, can you please share with the Bamboo Pack and the listeners out there a little bit about yourself, your childhood, where you're from, whatever you'd like to share? Yeah. So my name's Dawson Bosley. Um, as all of you know, I'm Brian's son. I grew up in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and uh, I'm currently studying construction management at Northern Michigan University. So yeah. Good. Tell us about your childhood. You grew up in East Grand Rapids, went to East Grand Rapids. Uh, wealthy, then at uh, middle school, then graduated from East Grand Rapids High School a little yeah. over two years ago now? Uh, yeah, two uh, years ago. Yeah, two years ago. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, went to elementary school at Wealthy Elementary. Uh, that was in East Grand Rapids. Met a lot of friends there. And then switched over to East Grand Rapids Middle School when I was, I believe, 12. And then got out of there when I was 15, went to high school. Actually, I think I was 14. Yeah, I think you were 14. Yeah, yeah, 14. Almost 15. And so went to high school at East Grand Rapids, graduated there, and then decided that my next step was going to be going to Northern Michigan. So He was one of the lures that brought me up to the UP, even though I'm from here and have hunted up here for the past 13 years. 
because once he decided he's going to Northern to play lacrosse and to study construction management, my daughter Ashley and her amazing husband Chris and, of course, my little Jack are up here. So it was a no-brainer to hide, uh, migrate back up to the Upper Peninsula. All right, this next question is a little tough for me because I'm going to ask it. I ask everybody, but it's who was your greatest inspiration. So the reason it's tough for me to ask is if he says somebody else, I might start crying. But if he says right, me, it right. sounds like I'm begging for a question, begging yeah. for a, for a, um, applause. So, but I'm going to ask anyway. Who and why? Who was your greatest impression, inspiration growing up, and who and why, Dawson? Please tell the man boot pack. Genuinely, my greatest inspiration was definitely my father. And that's not because he's sitting a foot away from me. Um, but because as I was a kid, when I was roughly two years old, uh, my mom left us and we had to go find another spot. So we went, we moved into a condo in Caledonia and we didn't really have a lot growing up. Um, at least for a couple of years after the divorce, we didn't really have a lot. And my dad gave everything he had just to make me the man I am today. And for that, I don't know how I could ever repay him. So definitely my greatest inspiration. Oh, thanks, pal. Still to this day, too. <laughs> well, I, a really interesting story. It was a challenging time because we, when we left the marital home in, in Middleville, we left everything. We took Dawson's, all of his clothes and his play set and all his toys, his bed set. My, I didn't even take my books, actually. I lost about... Hey, 500 books and my hunting stuff. I did take that and right. everything else we just left. So for a while we were in this condo, Dawson's room looked fine, but I had an air mattress for a while. And I don't even think we had a couch for a No, we didn't have, we didn't have like any so. I think we had a TV, but I think we would yeah. sit on the floor and watch TV for a while. We, we built back up. That was almost 20 yeah. years ago. So thankfully we've built back up since then, but it was a, you know, it's interesting it, for the, the bamboo pack members out there. Dawson has shared with me so many times, that that was one of the greatest moments of his life was when we lived in that condo for a year and a half in mm -hmm. Caledonia before we migrated to East Grand Rapids. And yet it was a dark time. Yeah. But there was something that that little two-year-old boy found in that what was really a challenging time for, for us and the entire family. He found beauty in that. And that's really one of Dawson's strengths. He can find a lot of beauty in the darkest places in life. And I don't really know if he knows why it was a, such a great place. Do you have any idea why it was such a great experience for you or a great moment in life? Uh, not, I mean, not really. I think the only reason uh, would just be like how close you and I got probably. Yeah. Because we got so close after that. It was just you and I. So I think like we had the best times together during that. <laughs> we you know, didn't have time much of a choice. Yeah, we, didn't, we couldn't really do anything else, you know. <laughs> and I was so young. I don't really. Yeah. Not like I had a bunch of friends walking around, you know. You had me. I yeah, had you. you. Yeah, that was about <laughs> it. It's a great time. I, I remember a few times, and I think I've actually shared this on air before. You know, I would I would work all day. Thankfully, in the in the condo complex, we hired an uh, in house <laughs> nanny who would come up during the day, take care of Dawson's. I would go into my office in Grand Rapids and work. Mm -hmm. And at the time, my practice was only six or seven years old, and obviously, I couldn't travel anymore or fly around the country, which was what I was doing prior. Mm -hmm. So I had to make a local practice. And that was not easy to shut everything down, you know, my travels and say, okay, Grand Rapids is my city. Yeah. Now I have to find local uh, clients to, to consult with. And so we did have a challenging time. And I remember coming home after eight, 10, 12 hours of work and babysitter would go home. I would make dinner play with you for, you know, as much as until you were tired, yeah. put you down, you'd cry. I'd get you to, I'd, I'd, you know, rock you, get you up, you know, whatever. And uh, finally you go to sleep and I'd go to that patio and I would just be, I'd sit down in the chair and just be so exhausted. I would just cry. I don't even think it was an emotional cry. It was a physical cry, you know, just like nothing left of me and then try to get to bed and start all over again the next day. So I know when you look back on history in our lives, we tend to really remember the good moments and the good points of, of moments in our lives, we tend to forget the negative. That's how our brain, our brain protects yeah. itself. But that was a really eye-opening moment for both of us. And I do think you're right. Without that moment, we wouldn't have the bond we have today. Hmm. No, definitely I really not. believe that. All right. I want to ask you a question. Since you started uh, school up at Northern Michigan University, what do you think has been your greatest learning at that time in the past year and a half? You're on your own. Dad's not there every day. He calls or texts every day, but he's not there every day. I think taking advice uh, from one of my older brothers, Evan, uh, like about like a few years ago, 
me and Evan, I remember we were on a hike in Grand Rapids, or sorry, Grand Haven, Michigan. And we were walking and he was telling me all about life. And the one thing that like really stuck with me to this day, and that I've been really working on in college is uh, the idea of like putting positive thoughts into your brain. And he talked to me about this for like 30 minutes. We were on this hike and he was talking to me about it. And uh, basically it came to the conclusion that you have two options. You either put bad thoughts or positive thoughts. There's no in between. A lot of people think that they can do both, but that's just not possible. And, you know, you're in your brain 24 seven. So you might as well give yourself a little bit of positive affirmations throughout the day that keep yourself going. And Evan's always been such a good inspiration to me as well. Um, just cause he's always been so positive and looking now he lives in California uh, with his beautiful wife, Sandy, and they're doing great things right now. And so it's really cool. Like the advice he gave me a few years ago is still stuck with me to this day. And that's just staying positive. Even in like the darkest situations, you stay positive. The more positive thoughts you bring to your brain, the more you start believing in it. And the actually the happier you start to feel. And so, yeah, probably just staying positive and giving yourself positive thoughts. It's, it's a simple idea, but it's like, when you actually start practicing it every day, you notice that your happiness will go up immensely. Well, we talked about this too. We said it's manifestation. Yeah, really. manifestation. Which that's another one too. Ten years ago, I thought was all psycho babble bullshit. Yeah. And then I realized neuroscience and behavioral yeah. science has got behind it, and and they're realizing, and physicists are realizing, it's not just a psychological trick. It's a physiological trick. Your brain cells literally change, mm-hmm. and they morph when you have more positive thoughts in your brain. Yeah, they blend yeah. together, they mend together, they mold together in a much more positive. And they can see this through fMRI machines that neuroscientists can watch. When people say make po- positive things, they can watch the brain physically change. And when they say negative things, it changes again. So so that's a good shout out to Evan. So we call Ebby. Good job out there, buddy. We're proud of you out in Lake Tahoe, California. Thanks for the advice you gave to your brother on that day because it's paying off big dividends. All right. Next question. This is a tough one for a lot of my guests. And uh, you and I have had so many deep thoughts over the years (laughs) and conversations that, you know, I I think you're really well equipped, especially for your uh, your 20 years of being a a man. Um, Just a difficult question for a lot of people, no matter how old they are, but you're relatively young to be asked this question. But Dawson, what would you tell the bamboo pack was the most difficult thing you've ever gone through? And what did you do to scale that brick wall when you faced it? I think it's not like for me, and I tell this to a lot of people, um, it's not like a specific few events that I went through. It's how like they ended up like making me behave. And I think just probably the most difficult thing that I've been through is just the anger that I received after my mother left when I was two. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then around so my so a little backstory my mom left when i was two um my dad later on ended up meeting a woman who acted like my mother for a while and then when i was 16 they split apart and that had a toll on me for sure i think even after my mom when i was two i had a lot of anger i'd go to the park and i'd see these kids with these perfect families well at least it looked like it you know i was young and i was always wondering why that wasn't me And so I'd take it out in just forms of anger, and then I'd try to be the class clown every once in a while. And just, like, I wasn't myself for the longest time. And then finally kind of found myself again, like, when I was at a younger age. And then when my stepmom and my dad split apart when I was 16, after that, it was, like, a whole nother... uh, a ray of anger just struck me and I was even more angry than I was the first time. I think it was more just like not, it wasn't like one person left, but like two people, it felt like left me and I didn't know why I was confused and I was hurt. And so I still face with a lot of anger today, but I'm definitely working on it and I'm finding tools to like really help me. Um, yeah, I really feel like it's just the anger that you get after these situations. Then it's, it's more because like you don't, 
you don't want to feel angry. Like you're happy deep down and you like, you know, you are, but it's just like small things will kind of make you a little pissed off and then you'll go from there and people notice it too. Like your friends and your family notice it a lot. Mm-hmm. Like you've mentioned some things to me before and my brother mentioned it this summer when I was living with him. And so it's, it's really a double abandonment. Yeah. I think just, I think that's, yeah. I mean, I think if we had to specify it to two events, I think it'd be those, but I think overall the most difficult thing is the anger that follows. Yeah, right. I don't think it's really like the actual event. I think it's really the anger that follows. And I think that's the case for a lot of situations. It's not the event that hurts it. Yeah. It's, it's the impact later on and how it yeah. affects us emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. You said you were working on some tools or you have some tools. Can you share what is what are some things that you do right. that help you man, uh, control that anger and turn that anger into a positive for you? Is it physical? Is it something yeah, emotional? So I think physically, so there's a lot of things. I think physically, for me, uh, I I mean, I've been fighting my whole life, for those of you that don't know. I did karate, I think, when I was like six to... You got your black belt when you were 12. So, 12. Yeah. Yeah, I think I fought a little bit after that. And then I didn't do anything for a couple of years. I played lacrosse, and then I got back into boxing when i was like six mm-hmm. probably 16 and then i still box now um i think another thing so that really helps get your anger out i think another thing is uh probably just going out and working out whether that's lifting weights doing five minutes of abs when you wake up or even going on like a mile run that always helps your your brain is like so clear-headed after that and then mentally um I think one of the best advices or yeah, best advice I ever got in my life was uh, somebody told me that anger is not there to hurt you. It's there to help you. And so when you think you're in danger, your brain, you get, you either get like scared, you get sad or you get angry. And so now like sometimes I'll be laying in bed and I'll randomly get this outburst of anger and I just have to like kind of talk to it. Like it's my friend, you know, a lot of people try and be like, ah, oh, why am I so angry? But I think when I'm laying in bed, I just kind of like, okay, like I'm angry, but I don't need to be angry. Like I'm not in any danger. I'm okay. And it's like weird. It's like, as soon as I kind of just talk myself down, it goes away. You know, I feel like a lot better. I feel a lot more calm. I can finally fall asleep. And then another thing too, one more thing is just meditation. I think meditation and for me, I like to pray a lot. So pray like prayer helps a lot too, but definitely, yeah, meditation helps. Well, I think one of the things you're so good at is uh, in what you've taught me. I remember last year. So for the Bamboo Pack members who don't know, when I moved from Grand Rapids, Michigan, up to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, I didn't really know <laughs> what town I was going to live in. I certainly hell didn't know what house I was going to live in. And I'm still fit finding my place in the circle up here. But for the first three months, I lived in my daughter and son-in-law's um, camper. They brought it down to me, put it in a nice camper, a, a park in, uh, on the river. And, and I remember one day... Uh, getting a text from Dawson. And I had a little, I, I had my weights in there and I was doing a lot of running and, and, and stair running and, and hiking every day. And just to keep myself, you know, like Dawson says, using your physical body to overcome some emotional or mental challenges you're going through. And he texted me or called me one day and I was, I think I was debating, it was like six or seven o'clock in the summer. I'm debating, ah, do I, do I want to, do I want to go to the yacht club and have a couple beers or should I work out? And he said, it's the thing that you don't want to do most is always the thing that you should do right now. And I thought, man, that stuck with me. And so that night I lifted weights rather than going to the yacht club. Mm -hmm. And that was just a good piece of advice. And you've been good at that a lot of times I notice when you're, uh, do I want to lift? Do I want to go for a hike? Do I want to do this? And you know at the moment you don't want to, but you you convince yourself, I'm going to do it because it's the thing I don't want to do. And the vast majority, not always, but the majority of the time, that is the right thing to do. You're just overcoming. You're running towards your fears. Yeah, you got to run toward it. Yeah. I think what you you told me too, or maybe I read this somewhere, but. We'll go with I told you. Okay, yeah, we'll go with that. Um, (laughs) I I guess he told me that uh, um, that is like, I think it was a two-minute rule. Or maybe, no, I, th- I think I did yeah. see that actually. Five second rule. Five second rule. Yeah. That's what, yeah. Five second rule. If you don't want to do something, do it for five seconds. And if you still don't want to do it after that, then don't do it. But the odds are that you do this thing for five seconds, you're going to want to do that. And you're going to like, you're going to motivate yourself to do it. So like, say you want to go or you have to go on a run. 
and you're laying in bed, you know, nobody wants to go on a run when you're laying in bed. You're all comfortable and you can go on your phone. It's cool to watch some uh, YouTube, get that fake dopamine in your system. Um, <laughs> but you just get up and put your shoes on. It's all you have to do. Get up and put your shoes on. And if you still don't want to go on a run, then don't. But the odds are, I guarantee you, 99% of the time, you're going to end up going on that run. And that's what I, I saw too. Some person, actually it was my friend. He, uh, very skinny guy, never worked out ever. And then he saw me working out pretty heavy the past few years and he got kind of inspired. And he's like, but I just never want to go to the gym. So I told him, I was like, well, just, or you think you told me this to tell him. And I told him, I said, get your shit on and drive to the gym. Then when you get there, you don't need to go in, but at least you drove to the gym and then, just keep going from there. Then take a step to the gym the next day. Then three steps the next day. And you eventually you'll make it to the gym and you'll realize it's not that bad. Because once you're there, anybody can do anything for two hours. It's not hard to do. And so, I don't know. I feel like really just facing and chasing that hard, mm -hmm. you know. And I think you told me too, there's always, there's two types of hard in life. There's a hard when you're sitting in bed and you're not doing anything. You look like a piece of shit. But then there's also a hard when you get out. And you go on those runs or you go to that workout, you know? So I guess pick your hard, like yeah. everybody always says. Well, you know, I think we talk a lot, Dawson, in our society. And so many – there's been so many books written on this and so many people in my profession and public speakers talk about this, about motivation. Motivation is bullshit. Mm -hmm. Motivation is an unfueled car. Motivation does not create action. It doesn't. No. Sometimes maybe – For like you, a day. You, yeah. It, maybe it's, a day or yeah, a night. You can be fed cotton candy. It's mm -hmm. cotton candy and sometimes it tastes good but it doesn't last long. Action – motivation does not create action. Action creates motivation and that's what you're talking about. That action of putting your shoes on yeah. will give you a little motivation and that's why it's so important to, to start something. Yeah, just walk into the gym. Then walk out if you want. Go to the gym and say, I'm going to stay for five minutes. Uh -huh. You're going to probably stay longer and then eventually you're going to get – your comfort zone is going to start to – blow up, increase, increase, and then you're going to be at the gym for 10 minutes and 20 and 30. Then you're going to be there working out four or five times a week for an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. And it is. I think what you said is right. It's that two types. I always call it two types of heart or two types of pain. You can choose your choice of pain in the world. You can't run from pain. Pain is inevitable to the human race. You can choose the pain of getting the stuff done now, that hard work, that grind, that blood, that sweat, that tears, and that hurts right now. Or you can, if you don't choose that, getting up and going for a run, going to the gym, uh, taking that side hustle, asking that person out on a date, you can choose not to take that, choose that pain. Mm -hmm. But if you don't choose that pain, life, the universe, God, karma, whatever you want to call it, is going to choose your pain for you. And that's the pain of regret. Yeah. You're going to get one of the two. One, you it hurts right now if you try it. If you go out there for a run, it hurts right now. But it only lasts a little while and it's a building pain. Yeah. You don't choose that one. The other one hits a little bit later, that pain of regret, and that's eternal, and that's a destructive pain. So I think you hit the nail right on the head. That was a good. That was good stuff right there. I'm more proud of you than I thought I was going to be today. I'm glad. <laughs> so to let the bamboo pack on, we tried doing this on Friday. So we did this – or Thursday, actually. We shot the podcast, and we got about 10 minutes into it, and Dawson said, I'm not ready right now, Dad. I'm like, all right. It's not a good time. So we just shot a sound bite to the podcast. We, we promoted that on social media. So today on Sunday, before he goes skiing, we decided to sit down and shoot the entire podcast. So mm -hmm. It's going good, though. Not too bad. It is going really well. It's better than well. last time. Yeah, a lot better than last I think you were in a better mood today than you yeah, were last time. Maybe know. it's because you're going skiing. I think so. Could be that. <laughs> All right. So, you know, Dawson, you're 20 years old. You'll be 21 next November, and that like, blows my mind. I don't know how that happened. But at, right now, at, as a sophomore at Northern, you're you're still boxing. You're, you're studying. You're doing a lot of reading, um, and good books that, are, you know, you've David Goggins and Cameron Haynes and books that really kind of inspire yeah, you to do yeah. things and, you know, obviously playing lacrosse and, and stuff like that. What would you say right now for you is a win for you in life? What would you say something happens that makes you feel proud? If that's a victory for you, no matter how big or small it is, what, what's one for you? Um, I think my biggest win as of recently, uh, I got to travel to Grand Rapids over Christmas break. And I think just seeing the friends that I haven't seen in – like a, a long time. Yeah, I saw a friend that I haven't seen in almost a year. And so that was really cool. So I think that was uh, a big win for me in my book recently. Uh, just chatting it up with some 
friends that you haven't seen in a while, talking about old memories and just seeing how they're doing in life, seeing how they're advancing. That was pretty neat. Yeah. I bet it's cool. And I, I mean, it's been so many years. And yeah. I, you know, I, Dawson knows that we, we got to San Ignis, Michigan on the Thursday before Christmas. And we, <laughs> we had to leave two days early because of the blizzard coming. So I, we jumped and left early Thursday morning to get to beat this two and a half day blizzard we had coming. And we got there. I, we weren't done with our shopping yet. Thankfully, there's a really neat uh, store, uh, downtown San Ignis. That has some really good uh, products and, you know, really high end stuff at a reasonable price, I think. And we were in there and uh, a friend of mine from high school, my best friend from high school, actually, Steve Becker, uh, chummed around for four years, played football together. Haven't talked to him. Well, we've texted back and forth. and I think we've had one phone call in the past 20 some years and he walked in. And I looked at him. I said, is that Steve Becker? And he turned around and he said, you don't know who I am. <laughs> I said, yeah, I do. He goes, no, you don't. I said, and he looked at me. He goes, oh, my gosh, it's Bose. And I said, so we, we, we talked for 20 minutes. And then we, the next night, he and I met for a couple of drinks and sat there for three hours reminiscing. And it's so fascinating when you go back, whether it's a year and a half, two years, or, or 30 years after graduation, and get to see how people have formed their lives. Yeah. You know, yeah. how they've grown and how they've morphed and changed. Because we all still look at our high school friends as they they were in high school. They're not 16 and 17 anymore. Uh, they're, yeah. you know, they're, they're older, especially those first couple of years of college really mold you into a different person. Yeah. So uh, that's a really good learning. So I think that's a good lesson for all of us is to maybe get out there and reconnect with somebody from your past, a childhood friend, an old family member, an aunt or an uncle, a cousin, just somebody from your distant past and, and notice how they've grown and take that as a lesson that we've all grown. Some have grown more than others, obviously. But, you know, just witness that growth of the human race and the human spirit. It's pretty inspiring. All right. This question here, Dawson, is this is an interesting one for me, uh, knowing that, you know, we, I've never asked you this question. So if right now you and I were to jump on a time machine like, what's that cartoon that you watch? Uh, car- that odd one with the drunk uncle. And oh, Rick and Morty. Rick That's and Morty. Okay. Like Rick and Morty. We jump on a time machine yeah. and we go back to the point where you're talking to that two-year-old boy yeah. who's sitting in the back seat of our Chrysler 300 and we're pulling out of, the, out of the family home and we're going to that condo. And you know that for 17 years, at this point in your life, you know you will not, that little boy will not see his mother for 17 years again. What piece of advice or what would you say to him that former two-year-old self on that first day of our family splitting up? Um, yeah, I think one of the, and this is cool because I did, uh, I think it was like three or four months ago, I did a guided meditation and I had to kind of talk about this. Um, I would basically probably tell that kid very, uh, kind of obvious things to say but it actually does mean a lot is that things will work out and i know like everybody hears that when they're going through something and they don't want to hear it at the time but it is true everything does work out i think god has a plan for all of us and i've never been in a situation where i haven't found happiness afterward and so i think just telling them that things will work out and like we talked about earlier stay positive have that positive mindset. And uh, I think also just kind of tell them, love what you have. And just don't take advantage of anything that you receive in life. I think truly that's it. I mean, I might not have a mother that's supportive of me, but I have a dad that who's extremely close with me. And I know I, if I'm ever in trouble, I can always go to him. And I have these brothers that are always there for me that I know if I'm, at, if I need anything that they'll always have my back. And I think just like realizing what you have in life and my sister as well. And sorry, I forgot to mention my sister. <laughs> well, yeah, she's the toughest of all of us. So. Yeah. She's the one that gives the most, uh, Hard advice. Sometimes she scares me a little bit. So, so. but no, I think I th- and my grandma as well. I'd like to point out her. She's always there for me. I feel like I can always talk to her. I think just realizing the family that you do have, because yes, I might not have a mother, but some people don't have grandmothers. Some people don't have brothers. Some people don't have a father. It's all relative. And I think really just realizing who you have in life and just being appreciative of that, because being 
I don't know, being angry, like, like we talked about earlier, being angry doesn't solve anything. It just happens, but it doesn't solve anything. Right. And so I think just being appreciative of, of what you do have and just, you know, leverage off of that, really. Oh, that's perfect. That's, well, you know, we've talked so many times, Dawson, about the power of gratitude. And again, yeah. 10 years ago, when I was more on the rational success uh, coaching process, I, I thought, oh, what is this gratitude? It's this baloney. Come on. But in reality, again, now with neuroscience being so prominent to lay people like me who can read neuroscience better now, but couldn't back in the day when it was only written by and read by, read by scientists, you realize that the power of gratitude and what it can do to transform your life. So for Bamboo Pack members out there right now, if you're going through a difficult period and you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel and things just like bleak and dark and and start writing down every day three to five things you are grateful for. Because if I said right now, tomorrow morning, I want you all when you're driving around your hometown or going to work or wherever you're going, look for blue cars. Come on, all the blue cars you can you can you see. And you write them down, there's gonna be a lot of blue cars. Yeah. Then Tuesday, if I said, okay, now forget blue cars, look for yellow cars and count those. You're going to find a lot of yellow cars. Now, on Monday, when you were looking for blue cars, you didn't see any yellow. And on Tuesday, when you're looking for yellow, you didn't see any blue. Our minds see what we're looking for. And when you start looking and noticing all the bad things in life, you're only going to see the bad things. Trust me, all the every single mass media out there, all the news sources out there, they know this. And that's why they're giving you all these bullcrap lies and all the negative things out there because they want you to be to continue to be feeding on on their negative news. That's why you don't hear a lot of good news. You can only hear bad news. Number one, our amygdala, a little almond-shaped uh, uh, portion of our brain, is, is designed for us to see bad things. It protects us. So we're drawn to bad things. So we're naturally that way. In fact, studies show at the University of California, Berkeley studies show that for every one positive thing we see around us, in this world, we notice nine negative things. Now, the ratio is actually the opposite. The ratio is probably 100 positive to every one negative, uh, if not more than that. But we see that one positive and we see nine negatives. It's because we're looking for the yellow car, not the blue car. Look for the blue car, the good things in life. Yeah, that's Write like them down. About positive. Yeah, it is. It's thoughts. exactly. And it manifests. Yeah, that's what I'm, yeah. And so every day, you know, every day, what I do six days a week is I call it my G3. I write down three things I'm grateful for at that moment. That's 530 in the morning. And it can be the warm cup of coffee in my hand. It can be the fact that last night before we went to bed, Dawson came and gave me a big bear hug and said, I love you, Dad. It could be it, – sometimes it's big things. Sometimes it seem seemingly meaningless things. But they, at that moment, they, they mean something. And your mind starts noticing those are good things. You know, there's an old psychic trick and they would tell people, you know, the, your, 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 your deceased mother is, is behind you and she's going to show you signs of the physical world. You're going to see pennies a lot in places you've never seen them before. And you will notice pennies in places you've never seen them before. They were always there. You just weren't looking for them. And that's how we can trick our mind with positivity and gratitude and, you know, manifestations as you talked about. Yeah. All right. So what's next for you? Not just today going skiing, but no, no, yeah. Um, finish college number one. Whether that's my associates or my bachelor's, I don't really know yet. Um, then after that, I want to find a job, possibly get into the trades, do something with that, and then uh, further down the road, uh, I'd say start my own business. I hate working for people, so and I'll do a good job working for people, but I just don't like it, so. I feel like I'm a good leader and I can lead a good business. So I think further down the road, start my own construction business, see how that goes. And then, yeah, I think, Okay. I don't know if I want to travel, possibly travel after college. I want to go to California. Uh, that'd be kind of cool. And then uh, maybe do some hunting trips out in Alaska would be kind of fun. That'd be With dead? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that'd be cool. <laughs> Well, I think no. Regardless, you know, regardless of what you do, whether you do four year, two years trades, travel, I mean, you're going to do great things in life. I, yeah. I've never doubted that. Well, there are probably a few moments of my of your younger years where I really yeah. wonder what this yeah. kid is going to be turning out to be. Not that you yeah. did anything really wrong, but just you know, single parents get scared all the time. I always tell, I told Ashley many times, this is my daughter for the Bamboo Pack members. I said when she became a parent last uh, July of 2021, I said, parenting is nothing but two things: love and worry. Love and worry, and it never stops. And that's all there is to parenting is love and worry. All right. So, Dawson, is there any question that I didn't ask you as we begin to wrap up here that you kind of wish I would have asked or I should have asked? Or is there any final message you want to leave with the bamboo pack? I think 
one thing my dad always told me growing up, and this has always stuck with me. I think this was my senior quote. Um, do your best, show respect, and have fun. And he always told me that. And that applies to everything in life. Do your best, whether it be working or writing a paper or just going on a mile walk that we were talking about earlier. Uh, show respect. Show respect to everybody. Uh, and then have fun. Have fun with it. Whatever you're doing, just have a good time. If you're not having fun, then what are you doing? Life's so short. And if you're not having fun, then you're not living a good life. So I think that's that, that right there would be my last uh, last quote. To Strive, say. love, and live. Strive, love, and live. Strive, love, and live, baby. Well, I just want to capture three things. And so you think about what we have on here, and I know I'm bragging a little bit, but even if he wasn't my son, if he was a complete stranger, I'd be very proud of what the message that I was taking notes as he was talking and just hearing – it's three basic messages that we all need to hear. Number one, practice positivity. Practice it. Say positive things, write positive things, look for positive things. Try to transform that brain because our brains are naturally negative. They're designed that way to protect us from saber-toothed cats and typhoons and warring tribes and uh, wolf attacks. We don't have those anymore, at least here in, the, in our the, the vast, 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 if not all bamboo pack members. We don't have those. Most of us don't. So we don't need them anymore. So our, that little amygdala is still operating. And it, wants, it wants job security in our brain. It's still looking for danger, Will Robinson. So look for the positive because the negative is going to come naturally. Just make sure we're overpowered with, with positivity. And that the, when you feel anger, and we all feel it. I have felt it a great deal over the past four or five months. Anger is not there to hurt you. It is there to help you. There's an episode we did back in the past. I did a monologue episode a few months ago called The Dark Side. And it's how do you take that dark side inside of you? Because that dark side that you have, that anger, that shame, that self, low self-esteem, that those, those question marks you have about yourself, those can, they can burn you inside. They can burn your soul, your spirit, but you can then flip them around and turn them into fuel to take, to launch you like a rocket ship. It's your choice. They can burn you or build you. They can burn you or build you. Exactly. Perfectly said. And then the last thing I love what he said and, and just love what you have. Love what you have. Look around right now. I know a lot of you come on here because you're going through some personal problems, and I'm not at all downplaying those. They're real. And I'm proud of you for fighting through those. And I fight through them every day. Dawson fights through them every day. We all do. It's the curse of the human being, of human nature. But it's also a blessing because it gives us the fortitude and the strength to be stronger every day. But while we're getting stronger every day and fighting through those difficult times and those difficult dark moments, we also look around. You've got a lot of amazing things in your life. You've got a roof over your head. You got food in your belly. You got water to drink. Most of us have transportation to get to and from places. We all have somebody who loves you. And if you don't feel like somebody loves you, I can tell you that I love you. And Dawson loves you. And a lot of the Bamboo Pack members out there love you, even though they don't know who you are. We're sending our love to you. We all have somebody out there who loves us who would fight tooth and nail for us, who would jump into the middle of a gunfight with a knife to defend you. So there's some beautiful lessons in here today. So Dawson, I know we had a shorter session. I knew we would. I know you want to get skiing. <laughs> but I just want to tell you that I'm proud of you. Thank you. Just, you know, you know your dad cries when he's happy. So I, I'm, I'm going to hold in the tears. Um. I just want to thank you. This was much better than I thought. The light lessons were short, sweet, simple, and that's exactly what we're looking for yeah. out here in the Bamboo Lab podcast. So thanks, yeah. my buddy. I love, love you. you. I think, too, these uh, these lessons that we said today, um, you hear them a lot in your life. And I think, I mean, these are very common sayings, you know, uh, stay positive, accept your anger, and uh, accept, like, acknowledge what you have they're very, like everybody says this but nobody really grasps them and i think once you once you actually grasp them in life you can change your entire mindset like for like a week just accept your anger think positive that's all you have to do for a week just see how it works stay more positive accept your anger and then acknowledge what you have and just notice that a lot of people say it but once you actually do it your life can change i promise you guys so thank you for having me, though. Appreciate oh, you're it. welcome. It I think you can sum it up. Common sense is not always common practice. Yeah, exactly. You got to practice it. Thank you, man. Well, thank you, son, for being such an amazing and inspiring guest on the Bamboo Lab podcast. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. I love it. you.
Love you too. <laughs> All right, everyone. Before we wrap up today, I want to give a shout out to Adventure Up North, which is the the the, the store in Sandiness, Michigan, my hometown on State Street. That Dawson and I were able to go in there and shop and get our great our, our final gi- uh, Christmas gifts, and where I got to meet my my amazing friend Steve um, Becker from Sandiness, and not only because of them being open, but because. I had to return a, a, a something that Dawson bought me because it was a, it was a large. I needed an extra large, or vice versa. I don't know, but they weren't open until Wednesday after Christmas. And I got a hold of the owner, and I told her my predicament. I was leaving town, so she had her daughter come down and open it up for me on Monday at five thirty, so I could make my exchanges. That's a level of service that you just don't see very seldom in the world. So thank you, not Lana, Lara. I'm sorry, Lara. I hope I pronounced that right. My goodness. Um, but anyway, Adventure Up North, State Street, St. Ignace, Michigan. Google it. Call them. Buy stuff from them. This this store has amazing quality clothes and items and and just the best service. Friendly people. And to come out of your way on the day after Christmas to open up so I can exchange one shirt. Thank you very much. That meant a lot to me. And I want to pr- sing your praises as much as I can. All right, everyone. We'll see you all soon. We have three more podcasts being recorded this week. So we'll be putting out some podcasts over the next couple of weeks. Some very good guests. Uh, I love them all, but I can't say that I love them all. Anyone as much as I love the one sitting next to me. And this has by far been the, my favorite podcast. I knew it would be. And uh, we'll see you soon. In the meantime, get out there and sculpt your life. Get out there. Sculpt away. Build yourself. Like Dawson said, strive, love, and live. I appreciate you all. Thank you.